Hey everyone, it's Susie. I thought I'd pop in before I head on into work. I just parked. It is 39 degrees Fahrenheit this morning here in New York. So it's wearing layers and scarves. I mean, it's chilly, even though it's blinding sunny. Uh, thank goodness we have uh, interior scenes to do today. And um, anyway, in this video, I'm continuing the 16 pound Shop Goodwill mixed jewelry lot. And it's gonna take four videos at least to complete. There's a lot of jewelry in there. So let's just jump right in and see what else I have. Enjoy the video. Okay, first off, I wanna go over some earrings. Yes, earrings, they're all pairs. And they are for pierced ears. Um, there's no clip-ons in this group. So let's go over each one of these. Um, first pair we have is this nice coral. Or maybe, yeah, maybe a pink seed bead hook earring. There's some bead caps on the bottom. They're in good condition. The back has some fabric. And they look... Uh, they look pretty boho to me. So we have this pair. Next up is a, another seed bead uh, drop earring with this neon green color as well as some orange and some translucent ones. And this is on its silver tone hook wire. So we have, uh, we have that pair. This one is very pretty. It's like a ruby red faceted bead on top, silver tone uh, setting. I like this one. I love that color, that's why. I love it for your nails, I love it for your lipstick. Really nice. Um, there's the back side, and they're in good condition. They look to be brand new. So we have this hoop earring. This next one is really sweet too. It is a silver tone hoop drop earring with a large uh, teardrop rhinestone on the bottom half. And on the top, there's a rhinestone as well. That's what they look like. Uh, you saw a peak of the back side. And yeah. They're not flat. Very nice. Very nice condition. So we have that. I'm just putting them into a little box as I go along. Uh, this one here is a really sweet brass tone, uh, like disc. Uh, and they are like a little slightly domed with this very nice leaf pattern. Uh, hook, uh, there's a hook wire and there's the back side. So we have this pair. This one is a silver tone lever back hammered hoop earring with a acrylic uh, oval bead in the frame. <clears throat> and there's the back side. Um, yeah, they look to be in okay. Okay condition. Oops. They go like that. No. Try again, Susie. Like that. This one looks like um, one of the necklaces that I've, I showed in the first video, I think. Um, so I will check and if they are matching uh, and if anyone buys that necklace, um, the earrings are available too. So these are hoops with um, this faceted bead on top and some dangling ones on the bottom. Um, there seems to be some loss on one of them right there on the top. So we have that. Next up, oh, just some faceted acrylic drop earrings. This one here, 
silver tone heart and then you have these beads on top on a silver tone hook wire these are nice these are like red enamel um they're like bezeled and look at that uh, ear wire silver tone on the back that's what that's what the back looks like I like these very pretty the next pair okay these are lever back oh very nice these have a, a clear uh, crystal bottom and the top has some rhinestones if I can hold it up and they're yeah they're like yellow and clear rhinestones and they look to be all well, there oh excuse the noise okay this is um pink and red and purple acrylic bead drop earrings on like a gunmetal or silver maybe silver hook hook ear hook ear wire um so we have that pair these are just plain little faceted beads um there's the back side on a silver tone hook wire These are, oh, these are clip-ons. Um, I'm opening them to see if I see any mark. No, I don't see any mark. But they have that brown, moon glowy type of bead. Nice. Okay, these, these are pretty, like a black, glossy black, and they are like bezeled, and there's a back side. Um, if they have mitch ma mismatched backings, I will fix that. Um, so we have this pair. This is so nice. I was looking at this before and it's these silver tone rounds with a very nice design and in the middle is a green enamel with this gold center and um that's the back side is that um that design that 1928 uses i'm not uh a hundred percent certain but they have weight and they I think they're really very pretty so we have that now we have some chandelier earrings in this ruby red and orange color on a brass tone setting there's the back side Looks to be in really nice condition. Yes, they dangle. So we have we have that pair. And all the stones look to be present. These are really okay, let's move this down. Um let's look at more chandelier earrings. Wow. Silver tone, it has rhinestones throughout, and then you have this very pretty teardrop yellow, like swirly type of bead on the bottom. Faceted. These are kind of nice. The stones look to be present. I believe so. 
there's the back side. I don't see any marks. We have that. And let's look at the other one. Here's the other one. And it looks pretty good. I believe so. And there's the back side to this. I like these. It's a different color. So we have this pair. Next up is this green pair. It's like a gradient. It's lighter green on top, darker on the bottom. Beaded um, raised design on silver tone ear wires. Very clean, really nice. There's the back and um, they look to be in great condition. So we have that. Next up, we have these really long ones, um, long tassel earrings. This is on a gold tone wire. It has these textured silver tone links on top holding uh, gold tone tassels. And they look to be in pretty nice condition. So we have, we have that pair. Okay, and here's another long one, and it's made up of a gunmetal, mm, yeah, I guess it is, chain link. And the other side is made up of this with the um, black faceted beads. So that's different. They're on a silver tone wire. So picture wearing that. They're pretty long. All right, um, let me get this out of the way. Yeah, that's my dirty table. Let's move this one here. This one is nice. They're just um, drop earrings. You have that, uh, I guess it's similar to filigree, kind of. Uh, design in like a cone shape. It's on a black. Well, no, it's just a darkened ear wire. I have that pair. Here's a red pair and it has gold. Um, this gold saucer like middle and it's on a gold ear wire. Mm hmm. This is so sweet. This is like a mini, mini chandelier earring. I like this one. It's gold tone. Well, more so, more so a brass tone. And there's, um, just plain, nice, very, I like this. It's just very simple, um, danglies. No, no rhinestones, just nice design on a hook wire. And then you have this mini one. This is silver tone with that purple, kind of like a purple, uh, purple dyed halite. But look, it has these little dangly. There's the, let's show the backside. There's the backside. They look brand new. So we have that pair. Um, what up? What are these? These are little stud earrings. They have little sparklies in them. There's the back. It's just really very sweet. And then I found all these copper tone ones. This one is a, like a knot copper tone. This one is, oh, this is a rose with the rhinestone center. You see, it's tiered. Very nice. And these are copper tone bows. And then we have this, like a Rivoli with that crazy rainbow color. Really nice very clean see the back 
trying to escape. So we have that. And then next group is this. You have these um, acrylic piece drop earrings on silver tone ear wire. It's like a faux um, tortoiseshell. You have this one in this really cool red striped color design on silver tone um, ear wires. Oh, is that a scratch? Maybe you should wear it that way. <laughs> then you have this one. This looks like um like very lightweight metal. Yeah, they are metal. You see the back? But they are painted this neon orange with this really pretty design. And it's on a silver tone hook wire. Fun, right? These are nice. They're open hoop earrings. I see no marks on these, but I kind of like them. They're like an antique brass tone, open work. I think they're in nice condition. We have that. This is another brass tone hammered uh, earring that has these beads on top. They're acrylic, but if you look closely, they have that gold swirly design on, on both of them. And it's on a brass tone ear wire. This here, this is long. Leaf, leaves, gold tone and black on a gold tone ear wire. That's what it looks like. See how detailed it is? And that's the back side. Even though they're long, they're not hard to wear. They're not, they're not too heavy at all. But uh, very fun. And here is the other one. They look to be brand new. So we have this pair. Next up, this is a hoop earring that's wrapped with chains and a strand of rhinestones. And it has this type of closure. Like that. I think they're cool. And then we have this pair. This is a silver tone earring. Has some wear on the back. And there's acrylic um, faux turquoise beads on the bottom. And then you have these uh, faceted acrylic beads. There's a raised bead design. And all the beads are there. I'm referring to the um, lighter blue ones. And I think this pair is a really fun, fun style. So we have this. And then lastly, I found this pair. I think they're really sweet. This one, I would probably um, put this in craft because I noticed that one is silver tone and this one is silver tone, but the edges seem to have like a gold, gold, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is it's a very nice pair of earrings, but they're not identical. I think this color is off as opposed to the one on the left, but they're still really cute. So this will be a craft item. And then I found only one of these, but I, he's amazing. Look at the detail. He is so sweet. This could be a pendant. That's why I like to show um, single earrings 
to my crafters out there and my jewelry um, repurposers. Is that a word? Um, because this fella is really nice. He has dimension. And I just have not seen one like this before. So we have this single silver tone earring that can be used um, as a pendant or something else. So I wanted to show that. And what else? This pair I found are clip-ons. And they do need to be cleaned up. But they're the sweetest little cameos. Not of a woman, but of flowers. I guess that's supposed to be like a Wedgwood blue, but it's so old that it's faded into this kind of greenish blue color, I guess. But um, let me, um, yeah, okay. They're magnetic, but I just think um, they're still really quite beautiful. And uh, there's this pair that says LC on them um, for Liz Claiborne. And I did show, did I show it? I know that there is a matching something in the box to these earrings. Um, it's either it's either a necklace or a bracelet, I don't recall, but we'll find out later on in the video. So, okay, moving on. All right, grab some more necklaces. And this one here, pretty classy. Uh, this one has a silver tone chain. And you know what, before I pick it up, let's measure the drop on this. The drop is about, oh, approximately seven and a half inches. Now let's take a look at it. This here has beautiful emerald green acrylic faceted beads. And then um, there's these little stations in between filled with rhinestones. The chain is very nice. It's um, not so delicate. And there is a lobster claw at the end. This is a very clean necklace. Uh, there's some loops on the extender. And there's also a jewelry tag. And that says Nine West. All right. I guess Nine West, not only are they known for shoes, but they make jewelry. So we have this one. And then next up is um, this very chunky necklace. Very heavy gunmetal tone curbling chain. Let's see. Let me pick this up. Okay. It's a, um, oh, it's asymmetric. One side has two chains. And the other side has one and it's holding these chain links three of them are polished and then the middle two are filled with rhinestones taking um a look at it closer they look to be missing one Right there, I see one missing. Any more? Mm. I don't believe so. It's in really nice condition. Uh, like I said, there is one strand on one side and the other side has two strands, but then it does end up with one strand and it's a toggle. Oh, there's a jewelry tag too. And it is the letter T. So this is a Talbot's uh, necklace. So measuring this, okay, when I line it up, 
the uh, the links fall on one side. So this one has a drop of about ten inches. So we have uh, we have this one, and unfortunately, it is missing only that one rhinestone right there. Yeah, right there. So we have this. And then the next one I wanted to show you is this beauty. Let me make room because this is a special one. This here is uh, still new on tag and it's a beautiful silver tone panel. Um, it needs to be cleaned up with these enamel panels in black, glossy black has a beautiful silver tone oval, like a rollo chain. There is a lobster claw and there is an extender. There was a um, tag on it and it's from Macy's right here. And it was um, priced at $40, but I gently pulled off the barcode to find out that this is actually a M. Haskell necklace. M. Haskell, okay, well, let me, let's look at the necklace. It does need some polishing, okay? And the back side is like so. These are held together by these um, wires and that's the construction. It looks to be like a collar length or a choker style. Um, let me measure the drop. And this one measures approximately seven inches. And then you do have that extender. Now, um, let me talk about M. Haskell for a moment. Um, it's actually Miriam Haskell, but this is her uh, firm uh, currently what it's called today. I mean, she passed away in 81, but she was, um, she was born in 1899 in uh, Indianapolis, or was it Indiana? I think it was Indiana. And uh, she passed away in 81 in uh, Ohio. And she was infamous for designing beautiful, affordable jewelry back in the 20s up till the 60s. And her first uh, jewelry line was displayed here in New York City at a this very old hotel called the um, Mc, McAlpin. And till today, they still display her jewelry there uh, in the hotel um, through the years. Uh, like I said, she's from uh, Indiana and she moved to New York in the early 20s. And she opened up a jewelry boutique in 1926. And uh, that same year, she opened up a second outlet on uh, West 57th Street. I mean, West 57th Street today is hoity-toity. Um, her jewelry back in the day was worn by movie stars and film stars for uh, pu publicity shots, perhaps. And, um, you know, stars like Joan Crawford. I mean, Joan Crawford had almost every single piece she designed. And uh, Lucy, Lucille Ball, Gloria Vanderbilt, and even the Duchess of Windsor. Um, through the years, she really had a lot of wealthy clients, and she did a lot of community work. Um, clients such as, uh, let me think, oh, Ziegfeld. Think of Ziegfeld Follies. Um, the Folly Girls wore Hasco. Uh, Gimbal, the big department store chain, and even the car rental company Hertz. Um, 
she uh, even built a mansion on near the Hudson River here, near um, uh, it's upstate, I think, uh, Austin, and she called it the Saint Clair Cottage. And when oh, when the Ohio River flooded back in 1937, she she sent boxcars filled with supplies, relief supplies, and materials to help assist um, that tragedy. She even contributed a lot to uh, the war effort, you know, in World War II. But uh, sadly, that really affected, you know, her health and her mental stability. And she was uh, in her 50s at that time, I believe. And then uh, in 1950, control of her company eventually went to her brothers. And, um, you know, she, her jewelry lived on, but sadly, uh, her family had to sell most of her samples and her archives to pay uh, for her nursing home costs. So, you know, she, she did very well, but sadly in the end, she was not really um, all there, uh, can I say? Um, but uh, today, her company is called, um, what is it called? Uh, Haskell Jewelry, LLC. And um, it's still being produced. And this is uh, one of the current Miriam Haskell uh, jewelry pieces from, from that company. Um, what else can I say about her? She was quite an icon uh, back in the day because she was a woman and it was really a men's world at that time. So think of Coco Chanel. I mean, she came out with um, fashion and and uh, who else was there? Uh, Hattie, Hattie Carnegie. She's another one too. So yeah, uh, this is um, a Miriam Haskell current Miriam Haskell, M. Haskell uh, piece. So, uh, all right, moving on. I hope you enjoyed that, by the way. Next up, I found these two um, quite unusual necklaces. I believe they were made by the same person, um, perhaps uh, artisan made because I don't see any brands on them. They are on full leather uh, strips. This one is finished off with a lobster claw and an extender. And then you have these faceted black glass beads. And if you notice, they are sewn. You see the thread? Into the um, strap. Okay, if you like this, this can be worn, and the drop is, I would say, approximately 8 inches, or you can reuse these beautiful beads. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 strands. So we have that one. I don't know. I think that would be pretty fun. I mean, this um, faux leather is super soft. The next one is on a pebble, like a tan leather, and there's a snap on the end. And this one, they made holes to insert the jump rings, and it's holding five strands of these gray, like marbleized in a way, um, acrylic beads. And there's the back side. And let me measure the drop on this one. Really different, but you know what? Gray and tan. 
does work good together. So this one has a drop of about seven and a half inches. So um, I guess these are both right at the collarbone, perhaps. So we have these two very unique necklaces. Okay, let's check out some acrylic necklaces. This one here is a vintage necklace. And look at these colors. Really unique. They're like little slabs of minty green and pink and lilac and white and blue and taupe. And they have all that like spotty design in them. Uh, there is a spring ring clasp at the end, and there's silver tone bead spacers. That's the back side. This is just super unique. Um, let's see now. Something like this. Mm -hmm. How would I measure this? Maybe as so. I mean, it does look really tiny. Oh my goodness. This is, I mean, no, I guess I gotta measure it. Let me try this way. <laughs> this, this looks to be about 14 inches. Very small. There are some nice beads at the uh, finishing off the end. Really unique. Very different. So we have that one. And then this one here. This one is a gold tone necklace by Charming Charlie's. It has these faceted uh, medallions in like a peachy color and green and beige with the beaded uh, raised bead frame design. Uh, there's the back side. I mean, this looks pretty good. It looks hardly worn, to be honest with you. There's like an elongated um, gold tone chain link. And let me place this at the ring and measure, measure the drop. So what do you think of the box so far? Um, tell me what you like in the comments or what you don't like. <laughs> okay, this one has a seven inch drop and there is a long extender. So this is by um, Charming Charlie's. And then this one on the right, oh my goodness, this is really um, large. <laughs> and multi-strand it's chunky those beads are so glossy they're so shiny it's like um i guess yeah they are faceted and then you have these teal color swirly slabs in between there's a lobster claw there's a tiny extender Oh, there's a price tag of $38. Um, this is fun, I have to say. It's multi-strand. There are three, five strands. And they are tiered. What a fun necklace. Let me, uh, let me measure the drop for you. As is. Um... It's about, I would say, seven inches. I like this color. It's kind of yellowish. It's kind of beige. It's kind of like champagne. Pretty cool. Okay, next up, we're going to look at some black acrylic beaded jewelry. First off is this vintage necklace. Acrylic beads, gold tone bead spacers, and a hidden barrel clasp. Looking at this, um, it seems to be kind of loose right here. 
you see the string so maybe this can be restrung otherwise it is still wearable um let me measure the drop on that there's no maker's mark on it but i have seen many of these um vintage necklaces they are uh found in these boxes at times rarely eight and a half inches and in drop and we have that one this one here is a faceted acrylic bead boy does it need a wipe down um and the beads are graduated in size you have the silver tone chain on top lobster claw extender this one has a drop of about eight inches as well and you can lengthen it uh this one i think i'll, I'll do last this here this is a very nice you see that design it's the diagonal stripes going through these acrylic beads there are uh, black seed bead spacers in between there's a like a gunmetal tone um lobster claw and extender and a jewelry tag do you recognize that um let's see if it says anything liz and co okay so this is a liz claiborne acrylic bead necklace The drop on this one is also a little over eight inches long and you do have that extender um the next one here unfortunately i really like this one though i like this shape in fact i have a um identical necklace uh style but it has amber colored sea beads and and like a amber color bead in this shape this one is all black there's multi strands but unfortunately it's missing the clasp so you have that little hook on that end and then uh, you got this extender what something's going on so it's missing the closure but these beads are really fun to work with so this unfortunately um is not wearable so it's going to the craft lot now we can move everyone aside because we have to make room for this gigantic necklace this necklace is gunmetal in tone it has a large link chain it has that lobster claw a very long extender and it says um n i think it says n and hanging off of it are two rows of these heavy faceted teardrop pendants and then you have this little like circle of pendants on the very bottom really heavy but let's measure the drop on this one this one has a drop of about nine inches maybe about nine inches so we have this one i'm wondering what makes it so heavy if these are acrylic i guess the amount the amount of them let me uh there you go <laughs> all right let's see what else we have okay next up we have some necklaces this one it's really nice it has five strands there's a hook type of closure at the end in silver tone and if i bring you in closer look at the colors they're like potato pearls and like a wine, green, purplish. Yeah. They feel good. They're like potato pearls. And um, 
they look to be in pretty nice condition. So um, let's measure the drop on this. And this one falls about seven inches. So we have that one. Uh, next up is this. I thought this was pretty fun. It's a very lightweight. You see how thin these little plates of um, cold toned flowers are. There's the back side. And um, they're like pastel spring colors. And they have a pearl center. Oh, but one is missing. I'm sure it's probably in the bottom of the box. And if not, I, yeah, I have pearls that can replace that missing one. There is a gold tone chain. It's in nice condition. Uh, a lobster claw and a very long extender. So measuring this, this one, this fun necklace. Let me line it up. This one is about eight inches and you can lengthen it, of course, because we have that extender. And then last one in this group, I mean, this is a miss mishmash of necklaces I pulled out. This one, okay, let's put this one front and center. Beautiful silver tone, <clears throat> vintage necklace in a blue thermoset. Wow. And see how thick these little beads are. Very pretty um, design in between with some ribbing and some open work. They have like a, kind of like a moon glowy effect to them. And it's on this chain, really unique. There's these elongated flat links connected by like jump rings. And there's a, a hook closure. Here's the back side, and there is some wear right, right on some of the back bottom portions. Uh, this side looks pretty good. Let's see. Not bad. And it is signed right there on the hook clasp. That says Coro with the copyright. Coro has been around since uh, 1901, 1902. And the Coro um, maker's mark with the, cop with the copyright, they started using that in 1955. So this is a beautiful vintage uh, Coro thermoset necklace. And let me measure the drop on this one. Right now it's hooked on the very last hook and it comes to, oh, seven inches. Yeah, seven inches in drop. So we have this really beautiful vintage coro oops there's some okay there it is thermoset necklace well that's a wrap for part two hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up subscribe to get in on the discounted rates if there's anything you would like to purchase Email me at dragonflybees at gmail.com. Instructions are in the beginning after my intro, as well as below in the, com in the description box. Check the sold list. It's pinned in the comments. And uh, ring the bell. That way, you'll get alerted when I post the next parts. All right. Thank you again for spending this time with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.